two windows. Action group. We want action. We want the doors being held open for the pupils. My name is uh, Tricia Pert. I'm a learning support teacher in the northwest of Scotland. I work in four little primary schools. One or two teacher schools and one three teacher school and I teach a day in the new high school. About a hundred years ago there was a mention in the statistical count of Scotland for this area of a need for a secondary school but I mean it's really been fought for probably for about the last 40 years. What was happening was that the local people in fact were used to their children going away. They went away themselves when they were 11 years old over to Galsby um, and I mean, 30 years ago, they went away for a term. They didn't even get home at weekends. It was the incomers, like myself, who came in, who were just aghast at the thought of their young children going away from them at 11 years old and, you know, spending a week away. And what was happening was you had incomer families coming in. When their children got to be about 10 or 11, they moved out of the area again. A lot of people, when they, they get um, asked about it, you, you talk about oh, it's in the north west, west of Scotland, and they, they think of um, somewhere maybe 100, 150 miles south of here, but Kinloch Bellevue is in the extreme northwest corner of Scotland. It seemed just that such a super opportunity to come up to a, a great part of the world and get a, a new school to boot and get to going right from day one in the ground and, and, and start. Look, this is a line being drawn. Here it's being drawn on the board. And it says, for every year, you've got to do two centimetres. So there's my first two centimetres. Two centimetres. In year one, when I was one year old, I finished my university degree. <laughs> Year two, where is year two? <laughs> year two, I think I made my first million. <laughs> so that's my little timeline. You've got to do the same thing. You would be here if you made your first million. One of the reasons that I, I really was interested in coming here was this uh, notion of re, if you like, bringing the Highlands back to life. If you think back historically, there were a lot of people living here prior to the clearances. So we're hoping that this school will regenerate northwest Sutherland and perhaps even further afield than that. And that the youngsters coming out the other end of it will have a whole range of abilities that will allow them to, to stay here if they want to and to be content, hopefully, with the lifestyle they have and also to be able to participate, as they say, in society. We have 25 pupils. But that only consists of those in first and second year. Uh, by the time the school grows to a six-year school, there should be 90. August the 1st I started here as uh, a janitor, but the school wasn't open, there was no children here. And then all of a sudden the big day came when the, the, the doors opened for the first time, and then the children came in, which was a good thing. After all that build up for about three years now, we've been watching and 
and even at community council level we watched the plans for the school come through and we knew then that there was a major injection of money into the west which was a good thing for the children because it was always a, a sorry thing in my sight to see the kids every Sunday night going up in the buses away to the east coast for to do their further education and I always thought well at some time that the, the, these children should stay here. Claire. Um, no, Alana. I'm Claire. I'm, I'm Alana, and she's Claire. And, and she's you don't, Tanya. you don't, oh, you don't pronounce it all enough. You pronounce it all enough. And she's Fiona. Fiona, that's Fiona. 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 We threw her in the mud. <laughs> 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 but my parents were Scottish. My mother was from Shetland. My father was from near Edinburgh. And they emigrated to Canada just before the Second World War, where I was born and brought up and left Canada when I was 21. So I've actually lived longer now in Britain um, than in Canada. Although only the nine, this last nine years in Scotland. The main thing that people do, the main work that people have is, I suppose really, fishing. That's the main, that's why Kinloch Bearview is here on the map at all as a village. The other thing that people do is croft, which means that they have small holdings which have got sheep. And a few people have got cows, but nobody ever makes a living from crofting. You've got to have some other form of um, employment as well. I don't do any crofting myself, but I help out with um, a small flock of sheep, about 40 they are now, um, across the road. So during the winter I'm involved in feeding the sheep, and then in the springtime I'm involved in lambing. I've done that for about five years now. But now that I'm teaching full time, uh, I think I'm going to have to stop being quite as involved as I am. Now that the kids are in the building and you can see the standard of education Hello. that they're, they're, they're receiving, which is good. And uh, they've got Gaelic, French, English. And it's a great thing to see these kids the standard of education. Computers, they can sit down there for hours rather than have one computer per person. One computer rather, maybe to a class. They can all sit round a table upstairs with Mr Fisher and they sit there and they can move at their own levels. I think they've adapted surprisingly well to, to the new surroundings. I would have expected more hiccups. But what's really good about them is they're quite they're bouncy children. They're not, they, they don't uh, sit quietly by and, and, and expect things to be given to them. They're really quite alive. It's, it's a nice atmosphere. She fancies you and Ross. I oh, fancy Rowan. Oh, she fancies Rowan. You know, there are times when you think, oh, I wish they would kind of maybe just calm down a little bit. But uh, I think given the, the way things are at the moment and until the royal visit is over, I think we'll be receiving lots and lots of attention. After that's passed, I think we'll get back to what might be considered to be a semi-normal school. And uh, <laughs> they will settle down into the misery of work, which is uh, what we will perhaps have to encourage them to do. My name is Brian Ross and I'm, I think the school is better than it was when I started because of all the new things that are coming. My favourite piece of work I think I've done is a picture I did in art and I'm looking forward to the acetate and the fitness one. What a nice 
nice smile. What a nice smile he has. Very good. Smile at the start, smile at the end. This fellow is a professional. Sorry? I think he's... I think he's a professional. Hello, this is Craig Anderson from BBC Television. I've uh, spent the last three hours here at the school uh, being shown round by uh, John Fisher and by uh, Dr Ian Smith. And I have to say I'm very impressed indeed, both with the, uh, the technical equipment that's here and also with just the finish of the school and the, the general light and airy feel about it. I have to say that um, if they had schools like this when I was at school, perhaps I would have done something more useful than being a television journalist. So you've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> That's always easy to the kids. We thought at the start that we'd need to, we'd start an archive off uh, for future generations to see what the first day at Kinloch Burvey High School would, would be like. And uh, the use of video is now the video camera is an essential part of the curriculum. Um, and uh, I would think that the pupils would have to learn to communicate through the through the uh, spoken mode and also through the written mode and uh, talking to camera. Uh, is part of solo talk, which is a part of standard grade English. Just what you told me. You remember you said you were worried. And... I can see that. What did you say? Yeah. Don't know. I'll think a setting. Right. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Wished everyone then. Alexandra and Natasha aren't here at the moment, but they'll be doing their vox pop with the second years. I thought that the school was really nice when I first came in because it was so big and, and the, second, the bottom floor wasn't ready. I'm really looking for, forward to home economics and I, really, I thought my best piece of work was on the computer when I had to type out about myself. Goodbye. When I first got the job I didn't think that I would be involved in, in so much of the um, ordering processes of, of and sorting out just what we were going exactly what we were going to buy, especially the expensive hardware we've bought that in now because there won't be the money in five or six years' time just to keep up upgrading. So we have um, more computers than we have children. But that is basically because the school has still to go. Hello, hello, Andy. It's Ian Graham here. Hi, Ian. Uh, I'm, I didn't get anything. I'm up at Kinloch Berry. I didn't manage to get anything done yesterday afternoon, so I just took the kid up here, and uh, I'm actually phoning you on the ISDN phone <laughs> to oh, see good. if that to check if the ISDN line was working uh -huh. before I got because I didn't get any joy with uh, a quick try on the Meet Me okay. software. One thing that I'm interested in is the ISDN line here has two sockets for it, of which I've plugged into only one. That's okay. What we're doing here is we are setting up a video conferencing link with uh, another part of the Highland region. The system would allow pupils in any part of the country, if you like, to have the same tutor in any other part of the cosmos so that they can be taught from distance and they will see the person on the computer screen as a live video image. Yeah, that's great. Thanks very much, Andy. Right, bye. It's the only one that's actually linked up to an Apple computer in Scotland. So we're doing a first here. So this is a, a first for Scotland, a first for the world, and strangely enough, a first for Kinloch Berry. In my last school, which had 1,050 pupils, um, I didn't. I would walk along the corridor, and there'd be many of the children who just had no idea who they were. We was here within a day. Um, I had taught both classes twice and um, knew them all and knew them well. The closer you can get the, the, the pupils, the better you're able to understand what their needs are, what their problems are. Are you lot looking forward to the royal visit this week? Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go and tell me, though, like one, no. of, one after the other, what you think no. of like no. Prince Charles. No, no. I, I hate Prince Charles. Charles. He's the biggest. I'm gonna tie you. I'm gonna He's tie you. He's got the biggest ears in the world.
I came up here, I've got a music degree, and um, I actually got kind of pushed into playing my violin at one Christmas carol concert at, the, um, at a concert for some of the older people in the community, and it just kind of took off from there. And I've ended up having my, um, a little group of ladies, um, and we play Scottish traditional uh, tunes, and I'm, there's a Kaylee tomorrow night in the village hall. Um, there's our, my little band will be playing that. There'll be the pipe band um, of the West Sutherland pipe band itself. Together, everybody. The primary schools are supposed to burst into spontaneous song when Prince Charles is about to leave. Uh, on the on the opening day, and I was asked to play my fiddle, uh, more or less keep them in tune. And there's very ceremonies that go on, go on, and you're all standing as a group. They are now standing as this group, where we're going to have a practice in a minute, so you'll know where you're standing. And he comes, and various people present him stuff, and he cuts the ribbon, and he shakes hands with folks, and. Brian Ross comes up and gives him, do you know who Brian Ross is? Yeah. Right. He comes up and gives him fishing flies or something. And probably at that point, Dr. Smith will go up and shake his hand and say goodbye. And that's when we burst into song. Burst. We just all burst. <laughs> Today, what have you been doing then? I've been doing stage lighting. I've been uh, fixing the lights in the stage, We're getting them all for a centre point in the stage. I've been putting the rest of the stage away, which is excellent for the requirements. Giving it a good dust down. First time it's been dusted down this year, I think. And uh, I'm just going to help to put some uh, coat, coat hooks up. Yes, I think that the angle that they were looking for, they knew that um, Charles was coming to open the school and around about the time that we were opening was the announcement and that um, his son, William, was going to go to Eton. So um, one of the reporters that came up here saw that this was a way to um, get a, a sort of wider sale of his story. involved in dealing with the journalists, they tend to, if you want to put it, it's like the reword, whatever uh, has been stated, and you get quotes from, say, the head teacher of the school, and he never ever <laughs> actually stated what was quoted as having been one of his statements. And we're getting headlines like, Kinloch Berry High School puts Eton in the shade, and, and sort of comments like that, which I'm sure uh, is untrue. Well, they tried to give all sorts of leading questions, like, um, 
So what you're saying basically, Dr. Smith, is that you believe that um, somebody like Prince William would get a, a better education here than he would at Eton. To which I replied, I couldn't possibly comment about other schools, but I know that the children here will get a good education. Of course, when it came to actually writing the report, um, or writing the story, they just totally ignored what I'd said and uh, quoted me as saying that um, I had um, said that they would get a, as good as, if not a better education here.
today was today was I think a big success. Uh, I would suggest that uh, Prince Charles enjoyed himself. He said to me, "Who was the guy with the video camera?" I said, "That was Jonathan Rab." He said, "What a cool guy." I went okay for him. He enjoyed it.